All right, all right, all right. This is You Can't Make This Shit Up. I'm your host, David Washington. We have a very special guest. We have today here in Orange County, Commissioner Maribel Gomez Cadero, District 4. How are you? I am fine. Hi. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I am very happy to be here with you today. Yes. Thank you so much. I am personally excited. This has been a long time coming, and uh, we're very gracious in being here in your presence, uh, and we are very appreciative of you having us here and interviewing again. Yes. So uh, before we get started, I will like the audience to know a little bit about yourself, if you don't mind. Of course. So I am Maribel Gomez Cordero. I am the commission in district for in Orange County. I have been here. This is my second term. This is my sixth year. I'm going to go to my seven. And I really love it. I really love serving the community. I'm not a politician, but I am a public servant that I will always, always, always be there for you. If I can do what I can do, if not, we're going to get help from anybody. So just to let you know, I'm also here because David Washington was my campaign manager uh, my two elections and um, in campaigning and in my two elections and he have been very supportive and a well advisor support supporter and so to me and to my person and I know you will be asking but wait a minute if you are in your second term you have two more years in 2026 to you know get over my position as a commissioner and what I'm going to do next well I'm praying right yes we are praying to see what the Lord want me to go to continue serving the community. That's, that's in fact uh, true. We are planning, we are looking at the political landscape to determine what your political future is. And Correct. thank you so much again. It's an honor to be here, but it's also an honor to have served you. Thank you. And I've learned how to serve the community that much more working with you. So again, thank you so much. Thank you. And speaking of serving the community, right now it's October 7th um and hurricane milton is yes. on its way yes, yes so this is a really important time for citizens but also for county government yes what does county government do in preparation for uh hurricane or natural disasters or potential disasters like hurricane milton um thank you david for asking for i mean this is Today is the preparation day, right? Mm -hmm. Which we're going to have press conference and the county have been all already meeting over the weekend since we knew that, you know, this hurricane was going to hit uh, Central Florida. We already having meetings, preparing. The mayor have been, you know, in contact with um, government, state and all. So just to say that what I can say is you have to get ready. You have to prepare yourself. This is going to hit us no matter what, right? If it's rain, a lot of rain or it's winds or whatever, like if you go into the news, you will see how all these elected officials have been saying, Correct. you have to get ready. You have to prepare. Yes. Since yesterday, the governor was also saying, you know, through his conference, press conference that you have Sunday, Monday and Tuesday to prepare. Do not leave it for tomorrow. You have to ha at least start yesterday getting your groceries, water, and all the things that you, you know, you need to, to get. Another thing that I have to say, um, eh, public safety, eh, public works, eh, the firefighters, the first responders, the emergency, all of them are meeting right now, getting um, ready and prepared for that, e including Duke Energy. And talking about Duke right. Energy, I want to tell you that based on the winds and all the rain and that hurricane that is coming. At least we're going to be without power. Three days, at least three days, wow. you will not have power. So if you are not going to have power, you have to get ready. You have to, you know, buy ice, get, you know, your refrigerator Correct. with cold drinks and so on, have them, you know, freeze there until, because we are not going to have um, a power at least for three days. Wow. Because, you know, sometimes where we have the, optical one that is on the, the ground, but there are a lot of, you know, overhead. trees and overhead, you know, um, traffic lights and cables. And so that that would be difficult when a tree fall wow. and hit the cable and knock down the power, what you're going to do. So you need to get prepared. This is a storm and this is something that, you know, we, we cannot control. David. That's correct. It's something that we as leaders and elected officials cannot control. But what can we do is be there for you, you know, help you, educate you, train you, and continue advising you that you need to prepare. Don't leave it for the last minute. It will be 
voluntary evacuation okay. and um, obligated evacuation. That, really? Yes. For example, if you see and if you go into the news, you will see that the traffic is very heavy over I-4. And so coming from Tampa is because those people have been already mandated mandated Evacuate. evacuation because what happened two weeks ago or a, a week and a half yes. there was another storm helene that hit that same coast and now the hurricane that is going to come in it says category three and two tampa as well so saying that it's important that you know you you get prepared put gas in your in your car you know have all these things have cash money in your home with you have your you know your documents important documents your medication you know all these things that right. you have to have ready in case you have to evacuate or leave. But what happened is if you know that you're in a flooded uh, area, don't leave it for the last minute. There will be shelters that will be open tomorrow. Okay, starting okay, tomorrow, Tuesday, there will be shelters that will be open. We at least, I have a count that are going to be from eight to 10 shelters that are going to be open tomorrow. Excellent. Okay? okay, for people to be, you know, moving from one place to another, the links is going to be providing transportation for free. Also, for to the shelters, Good. okay? That's another thing. Um, the sandbags already all yes. over the county, they have been, you know, collecting. Yesterday only, it was over 800,000 uh, sandbags were already filled. Wow. So what are we saying? That people are getting this, you know, have been responsible and getting this for serious. So another thing is, uh, David, that is important. If you have pets, if you have dogs and you That's have to right. be, you know, take care of them, bring them with you because we have um, pet friendly uh, shelters as well. Excellent. That's that great. they can bring them and be, you know, and be with them and not leave them alone or, you know, anything could happen and we have to protect them as well. Remember your medication, uh, cash money, put gas in your car. If you have any um, a, a, um, flashlights, you have to have right. your flashlights, batteries. Um, your yeah, batteries, your hygiene thing, your radio, if you have a radio that you can, you know, put, charge your cell phone as well, because right. that's important, you know? Correct. Uh, so what else? Uh, it's important that we, we, we follow the rules. Um, and I have to say, prepare, prepare, prepare. Don't leave it for the last minute. And I know we tend to think, oh, that's not going to come. I want you to tell me how that's not going to hit us in a way or another. Right. Unless, you know, the Lord will put it, go down or go up or, or just, you know, dissolve yourself in the Gulf. But if not, it's coming. In a way or another, we have to get ready. And by the grace of God, hopefully there will be very little complications due to the storm, the hurricane. And it sounds like Orange County is well prepared oh, yes. for this particular situation. And uh, in the past hurricanes that I've been involved in here in Orange County, here in Florida, the county has been incredible. They've been on top That's of correct. things as best as possible, including your district, of course. And the number of shelters, eight to 10 shelters available, I did not know that. Yes. And transportation uh, provided by links to the shelters. That, yes. That's just great. That's very yes. good news. Yes. And, and, you know, we have to open those many shelters because some of them are uh, big enough that can hold up to 300, 400 people, but there are others that can hold only 100, 200. So we're going to we're gonna open the, those many. And if we need more, we will. Uh, the other thing that is important, uh, David, that people know is stay connected. Don't be in the street. I mean, if you know, again, I'm going to say again, if you know that the rain, if it rains a lot and the water is going to come into your home, because it happened before, don't leave it for the last minute. Do not put the first responders in a position when the hurricane is hitting, then we have to go and rescue or they have to go and rescue that, that that's not going to happen right. because that's why they do in that evacuation, you know, earlier. Commissioner, this is really good information. And we were playing, we were playing to have the interview out a little bit later in the week or so. However, for this portion of the interview, I'm going to ask Cedra to take it and put it out on our social media okay. as quickly as possible. Okay. so that people have this valuable information yes now so yes. thank you so much and in the future also because florida will see yes. more hurricanes yes but and i and there's a press conference with the mayor today at four 
Okay. And I'm going to, um, the same thing that he, he says in English, I'm going to recap it in Spanish and I'm going to do my video in Spanish and put it and blast it over the social media. So that way the Spanish people all also know what's going on and that they don't, you know, they're not surprised or they didn't understand or, or where they can go. Well, I will tell them all that information. And this is why she is one of the better public servants and commissioners oh, thank here you. in Florida. Thank you. Thank no, you. Thank you for, you know, keeping us informed and truly caring about the, the community oh, yes. that you serve, all of Orange County and Central Florida in general. A little bit about yourself, Commissioner. How did you get here? The first time that you ran for office, what yeah. was it like? Well, the first time I, I ran for office is, was in 2018. It, very difficult. You know, I was naive in all of this. I didn't, I didn't know a clue what I was going into. But um, I have to say that I pray, you know, and I stand myself, you know, into um, trusting God in what was going to happen. It doesn't matter if, if I if I win or, 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 or I lose, I still was having and gaining experience, right? Yes. And But it was a difficult first uh, election campaign. Um, but, you know, we made it. I mean, and then we made it the second time in 2022. Yes. I have to say, like I said before, I'm not a politician. I mean, I, I, I am not that way. I am here to serve everybody, whoever. I don't care about colors or anything. You know that? Yes. If you are from the moon or from the stars and you call me, I will, I will, if I'm there to serve and I can do it, I will, I will serve you. And because that's why I'm here for, you know, this is a nonpartisan uh, position anyways, it's Correct. to serve everybody. So that's why I, I think I don't get into all these, you know, a uh, problems and gossiping and so because I yeah. really don't look into uh, who you are or what party you are. I don't care. I am here to serve and that's what I'm going to do until the end of my days here. But it has been an amazing experience. It, it, it has been an adventure and I, I try to make it an adventure And um, because every day I come here it's a different day. Yes. And I like to come to the office. I like to meet with my staff. I like to meet with the community, with the residents. But I do everything. You invite me to your home to drink water, I will go to your home to drink water. You invite me because you're sick in the hospital, I will go and visit you yes, at the true. hospital. If you, because it doesn't matter. This is my mission right now in eight, eight, eight years, and I want to make the best of it That's and true. enjoy it all every day. I mean, and I do it with passion. People need home, need a, you know, light bill to be, to be, um, you know, paid. And so, well, I try to look for all those resources and have them, you know, saved and, and pay the light bill mm -hmm. and help them. What is happening with the rent? Yes, it's too high, it increase, and we cannot pay. We cannot pay. We want to have a control, but remember, we try to, you're right, to, a, to put a, 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 a referendum on the ballot yes, and, it, and control the rent at least for a year to see if we can alleviate, you know, people can be alleviated for a year until it could, but even though it wasn't going to make the big, you know, mm -hmm. results or so, but it was going to make a little bit, you know, uh, alleviating some, some, some relief right. until, but you know, it's very expensive. It have been increased over 44% of the rent have been increased. Oh, yes. Like it's not $150 or $100 it have been $400, $600, $700. And people are in budget right now. You know, the, in the salary that they go, is not enough to pay, you know, dollars in a rent for a three that's bedroom, a four bedroom. That's a lot of money. That's a lot. I'm sorry, you know, and I, and I understand that's why I'm here to help, you know, the community, the people. And let me, t let me tell you, David, mm -hmm. the concept of homelessness or homeless people is not the same as before. We tend to connect one thing with another. That okay. homeless is connected with mental health and mental health is connected with homelessness. That's not true. That's not true. When people is homeless, Correct. Or were homeless or people homeless before, right? Prior. Okay. You will think like uh, addicts, people that are alcoholics or people that really didn't want to, you know, be at home, decide to be in, you know, out in a, 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 and homeless and they are homeless. You know, people that drink, that use drugs, that mentally are ill. And so that's the, that was the perception before right Correct. now there are families working class family yes. family they have full times part times working mm -hmm. and they are homeless because they cannot 
uh, save or have seven, eight thousand dollars to do a down payment, down payment. Uh, an application, the backgrounds, uh, all of this thing. And that's why we have an increase of homelessness people. So the whole dynamic of this new homeless population is changing and it's that much more difficult to address their needs when there's so little that they can afford. Correct. And housing is so expensive. Yes. And I understand, I was just reading the article earlier today that um, the job market here in Orlando uh, outside of the theme parks, for instance, or the hospitality lodging um, um, sector, yeah. it's difficult. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. However, people are trying to manage. I know that there's been different initiatives mm -hmm. within the county government to address these yes. needs. On the other side, and talking a little bit more about you as a public servant, how are people reacting to your advocacy and helping them understand mm -hmm. that, okay, we understand your needs. We're trying our best. However, there's so much that local government can do. How are they reacting? Well, to that's what I was going to come now because what happened is that it's not only the government issue or problem to resolve. We need to have the churches come in. We need to the no, private yes. sector to come in. Mm -hmm. We need the community, the neighbors, the residents to come in also and let's get together. So what? We decided to, uh, in this office with um, Samaritan uh, Center, yes. to uh, do an initiative which is to, uh, we are doing monthly town hall meetings, which this next time it will be October 17. Okay. Um, hopefully, well, no more or hurricane or anything <laughs> to to cancel it or reschedule it. But we're gonna bring the captain from um, sheriff office. We're gonna bring okay. other um, a lot of elected officials are coming. I am inviting them and they are coming to chip in to see how we all can come up with something. There you go. Because we need to help the families. You know, if you decide if somebody decides that they want to be homeless, well, that's a decision. That that's a you know. But with the with the bill or with the new, you know, uh, a bill that was approved, a sector bill that was approved effective by the October government. Effective October 1st. Effective October 1st, yes. where, where um, the homeless people cannot be sleeping in no public area, in no sidewalk. And, you know, so we have that's to hard. know what we're doing because that's, that's making it difficult for local government as well. Because now we, we have to get a location where we can take them. Right. If they are caught, you know, caught by... Um, by the the sheriff office of by on you know police officer right. law enforcement then they would be a place in jail and really? that's yes i'm not in a you know i'm not in agreement with that i think you know we have to get some other solutions and we have to come with some a, a, i don't know proposal or plans or so so we can protect them as well and save them because mm -hmm. it's not their fault there's a lot of things that are happening that people don't have the same you know, opportunities and so to to make it through. Correct. You know what I'm saying? We don't yes. have a list of all these Section 8 and, you know, low-income homes waiting for us to fill. There is none. Mm -hmm. There was a gap in two in um, 28, you remember when the recession came, that all there was right. a drop that they were, and let me tell you, in, in Orange County, there is a lack of more than 25,000 units that were not built, and we are still behind. Then COVID 000. came. Yes, then COVID came. And then COVID came and everything stopped too. Right. Because right. you couldn't do anything. So what we're saying is that we are very behind, right, in building units at home. And so they have been a lot of living facilities for mm -hmm. seniors that have been built. And that before before the, the, the completion of the construction, they were already filled. They were already filled, every unit, and then a waiting list coming in. So you see... That's that's another thing that a lot of people have been moving here from the north, from the north, from the west, from the middle, everywhere. Because wow. what the the weather here correct is fabulous. Uh, tourism is very high. Yes, there's a lot of things to do here. It's a very safe and, and, and good environment. The whole you know uh, Florida, so people move move here. But then we don't have the the structure, the the, the you know the resources to you know, uh, accommodate everyone. So it's, it, it's a lot. And then we are behind in, you know, low income uh, constructions, uh, units to, you know, fail. We don't have that much, you know, section eight homes that are, Correct. you know, entitled to put a family there. So it's a lot of things that we have to continue working in and, and doing 
that we are behind. Exactly. And not only us. That's a lot. A lot. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. Commissioner, um, just this past weekend, honest, uh, I was at two different events. And although they did not mention you by name, I kind of knew that they did, they were talking about you. And they were talking about how um, there are commissioners. In a good way or in a bad way? In a very good way. Oh, okay. Mutual friend, a okay. former commissioner. Okay. And uh, she said, I'll, I'll say what she said at County Watch this past Saturday, that okay. there are individual commissioners who go above and beyond and they will help people out of their district, even out of the county when they identify a need. And uh -huh. I know they were talking about you. Yeah. And I was very, I was very proud to hear that. And I know it's not always on your shoulders alone. Uh -huh. You have a really good team. Yes. And you and your team do a phenomenal job of constituent services. Yes. How's it, how important is having a good team? Oh, oh, that's more important than being a good commissioner because what happened is you have to, as a, as a leader, community leader, you have to uh, get people next to you that can represent you, yes. that look alike like you. If my heart and my passion and my emotions and everything is to help, is to support, is to serve the community, then that means that the people that are going to work for me and in my office have to feel the same thing. Exactly. Because if not, they will, first of all, when someone call our office and they are, you know, like aggressive or passive aggressive or, or just, you know, loud or so, they don't mean to. It's because they are stressed, they are frustrated, because I know people first get frustrated with the government because sometimes they call and call, nobody answers. If their own commissioners doesn't answer, their own leader doesn't answer, the representative doesn't answer, the senator doesn't answer, and somebody needs to answer because that's why we were here. We were here because of the, like I always say, the residents, they are our bosses. They are the right. ones that we are here for, not nobody else, you know? I mean, the community. So, so it's important that we, when we come to this side as a leader and we are voted in here, we owe that to the, to the people, to the community, to the, to the residents. So we cannot just not answer the phone. You know, we cannot just not answer an email. Look, there is something that I always put and is, and I learned this from DCF and you know that yes. you, you also have yes. that experience with DCF yes. when they trained you at least every single email that you receive you have to say thank you or you That's have right. a template that you can say we will get back to you whatever but they need to know that you receive it and that That's you right. read it and that you're going to answer it that's correct you see what i'm saying there is a lot of emails that come that people want um uh, meetings with me right that they want to meet because but i always ask okay you want to meet with what what are we going to discuss why not because i want to avoid no it's because i want to prepare what Correct. information I have to bring to you, if it's for this sidewalk, this road, this construction or whatever, I need to bring information or I need to bring a staff that know what, you know, you need to know and bring it to the to the meeting so that way we can, you know, take care of it. And we something that I like to know and, you know, um, David, that I like to do is I, ha I like to take um, good care of the time. I don't I do not like to waste the time. I don't. Don't like to say, okay, well, let's leave it for, we're going to discuss that later. No, let's do it now. Let's follow Take care now. Right now. Take care of it yes. about it now. Because then later, you know, that's pro procrastination. And, you know, I don't, do not like that's to right. procrastinate. That's right. But that's what I, I you know, it, I have to tell the people, I, I love it. I, I, like I said, we were trained as DCF. That's right. right? DCF. That's um, correct. Uh, dependency um, case managers or workers, supervisors, mm -hmm. lead, uh, you know, investigation. Your background in mental health. In mental health. In therapy. Yes. Same with mine. Yes. So, yes, yes, it does. That definitely helps in working with the community. Yes. And managing. Yes. An and office. come on, David, if you know somebody is in crisis, they need a home, they need to pay their light, they don't have money for gas, they don't have money for medication, They and they are a little bit, you know, a, you know, stress and so right. we're going to also, oh, come down. No, no, we don't do that. So, okay, how can I help you? Oh, yeah. okay, we're going to do that. Okay, Th don't worry. This is, let's see how we can help. And we have to, you know, load down all that stress that they have and listen. We don't have to solve all the problems, but listen. That's what we have to do as, le as leaders. 
Listen. I agree. I agree. And again, and my 30 odd years of uh, working in politics yes. and just my my years working in uh, behavioral health and mental health, uh, you you are the exemplary example of a combination of advocacy, public servant, and believe it or not, a politician. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's a good I mix. learned that. Yes, I learned that through the years. I did. I did. It, and it shows when I talk to people um, in our political space and outside of our political space, in your district or out of the district here in Central Florida, your name comes up in a very oh, positive way. So speaking of positive, one more question, and you kind of touched on it, your future after this. After, okay, after my eight years, um, 2026 is mm -hmm. my uh, last year as a commissioner. Yes. You know, I can step out four years and then come back and be a commissioner again. Yes. That's, an, uh, you know, an option. I could run for any other position, representative, Correct. senator, congress, whatever. Governor, you governor. Know. <laughs> but, but no, no, I'm, you know, I, I'm here and I'm here to serve. I mean, like I said before, yeah. um, we're going to start having meetings and you yes. know that uh, we're going to start having a meeting next year which yes. is when we have to make a decision in 2025 because then 2026 is campaigning mood let's put it that way yes. but 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 no right now i'm where the lord wants to take me i will do i will do it with the same passion and love that i have been doing it right now but i have to say all my passion and all my love and i love to serve and everything but it has not been easy it has been very difficult yes. it has been you know when you when you're a leader you expect to have all of this, but you don't have it. So you don't have all those resources to help the people, all the money and grants on, and funds that comes, you know, is a big county. You know, we have how many, like uh, 1.5, almost 1.5 million yeah, people, about 1 .5 right? Million. And yes. saying that and still people coming in and then we have to divide all that, those funds for everybody. And it's difficult. And some, you know, some um, of the initiative that I have in my office is the small business. You know, I'm very proud of small business. I'm always there, you know, helping and, yeah. and try to, you know, so they could continue. So, yes. Nona PR, for Nona instance. PR is one of the initiative where where we, where I wish one of the, the goal is not just doing networking and meeting each other. It's yeah. more for you to learn, educate, be trained, to be a vendor in the county, in the city, and in OCPS. So you can also, you know, a bid for different projects and so, and you can, you know, get on the, on the you know, on the table with, with these things exactly. and not always being subcontract, but being contract directly with your company. That's what I want with these small business and especially Hispanic yeah. small business. Exactly. All right. In closing, I usually have a got you question. You talked about accountability. There are two special individuals that you are intimately aware of that are very special to you. How are your grandchildren? Oh, that is the best. <laughs> Those are my happiness. I mean, I'm telling you, those stress days that we have here, because we do, I mean, I have to say that we do in one way or another. I just go home, go and visit them, see them, hug them, you know, listen to their smiles, to the laughing, to the uh, play with them, and then stress is out. There you go. That's how that's how heavy that, that whole thing about yeah. grandchildren is. So uh, I love them. I have to say hi to, yeah. to them. If they see me, they're a little, so they don't know. But at least if Abuela do this, they will know. <laughs> and um, uh, But that's that's good. You always, as a leader or, or, or as a person, you have to look for that yeah. thing that will, you know, calm you down and have you, you know, relax and happy and so you could continue. Excellent. Are there any final words you have for anyone who is thinking about public service in the future? So, yeah, good, good question. Good question. One of the things that I want to say is you have to get involved. Don't just come and, and wake up one day and say, I dreamed last night that I want to be, uh, you know, a sure. commissioner or a, go um, a governor or a mayor or something, but you haven't served in no boards, advisory board that we have a lot in this county yes. that we need people to come and fill in. And that's where you learn how this whole county runs. So that's my advice. Get into your commissioner or call me, my office, that so you could be appointed in one of these advisory boards so you could start learning and serving the community for free as a volunteer. Yes. You will learn so much that you will love it. And that will 
you know, continue increasing and, and create a good pas passion for you to continue helping the community. That way you will know where the funds come, the grants come, how to apply for this, for that, how you can continue helping the people before you come into an elected, you know, a position. I couldn't agree more. Commissioner, this has been incredible. Thank you again. Thank you. For being on our show and for all of our viewers and listeners. Please, if you like what you heard or like what you see, like, comment, share our content, mm -hmm. subscribe to our network, and especially the comments. I love responding to the comments. And if there's any questions that you may have for the commissioner, I'll make sure I talk to her staff and get those yes. questions to her. But uh, again, thank you so much. This is You Can't Make This Shit Up with Commissioner Maribel Gomez Cordero and yours truly, your host, David Washington. Thank you.